So I'm gonna do something here, and I'm gonna bring y'all along, let you let you be a part of what I'm messing with. And I'll explain it to you the way it came to me. By the way, this is the seat here that came out of the Studi Baker, and I'm gonna wanna put it somewhere, but I haven't quite figured out yet where. I'll set it over here for now. That way I can set you over here while we talk about the back end of the Studebaker. I know you're getting seasick because you're moving you around. Just stop whining and get over it. Move on. So, I have the back of the frame rail on the Studebaker and the leaf springs attached back here. So this is the back of the frame that's threaded. And I've known it was threaded for quite a while and I kept thinking that it looked like it would fit a bolt about like this. I'm not like some people. Some people would say, oh, that's a 5 sixteenths bolt with a number 20 thread and a blah, 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 blah. And I don't know that. I just know it's a bolt that big is a bolt that big. That's all I understand. So I kept trying to fit this bolt into that hole. It looked like it should fit, but it wouldn't. And then I tried a lot of different things. Nothing else worked. So I got a flashlight out and I started studying it. And I believe it actually would fit that hole, except that that hole is pretty nasty, as you might expect it to be, having spent, oh, I don't know, 90 years on the car and really not being used much. So I went and found, uh, I got my tap and die set out, and I found a, and I don't know if you call it a tap or a die, but the part that went through the nut, I got that out and got it to fit through this and then realized this and this are actually the same size. It's just that these threads need to be cleaned out. So I put the uh, tap die, whatever that is, into there and put some grease on it and I've been gently rotating this thing. And what that's doing is it's cleaning out the threads so that this will fit into that. Now this piece of threaded rod is the same size as this. So if I get these things where I can get a piece of threaded rod in there, I can cut the piece of threaded rod off and then I can take a piece of this metal that I have right here and I can cut it down to the right size and I can put it across here and make me a little bumper. And then I can take this tag that's down here and move it up and mount it up here on that bumper without um, messing up the paint job on the back of this thing. So that's what I have started out to do here. And that's what I am doing is working the threads out here. I'm gonna run this in here a little further. Then we're gonna do the other side. See, after you get to a certain point, this goes real nice. And then we'll do the other side. The other side is dirtier looking. It might be a little bit more difficult to get it started, but I think I can. So we'll just back that out. I suppose I could have brought the little attachment that fits this, but you think I did that? Heck no, that would have been that would have been too easy, Greasy. I always gotta do things a little bit the hard way, I do believe. So uh, now this should fit that. Yeah, see? Ain't that lovely? And of course, if that will fit that, then this threaded bar should fit that because they're both the same size. Now, I don't have a, a bolt like this that's long enough to go through that, but this threaded bar will do the trick. So what I can do is I can put this threaded bar in there, cut a piece, slide, drill a hole in that nut piece of metal and slide it on there and put a nut on the outside of it. And that can be my little bumper. It may be a temporary bumper. It may be a permanent bumper. I know a guy who's a sculptor and a metal artist, and I've talked to him a little bit about possibly making me a bumper, but if he does that, if he's gonna do that, it's gonna happen right away. And I'd like to, right now I still got Bill's Florida tag on here, and I'd like to put my tag on here. Uh, I took this out, drove it today, I really liked it. Uh, I don't have seat belts in it yet. The seat belts for that seat are literally attached to the seat. In there, there was roll-up kind that stick out, and I think that I wouldn't have room for them in the car. One of the things about those seats in there is there's very little room between the doors and 
in the seats so that it's hard to swivel that seat without the one seat bumping into the other seat. So rather than putting seat belts like that on, uh, I'm gonna get you some old fashioned airplane seat belts, which is what all the hot rod guys used to wear back in the day before, you know, seat belts became common. It used to be that there weren't no seat belts on cars, and if you had any, you had to go so I'm going to usually get some out of an old airplane. Of course, you have to keep in mind that the hot rod, the whole hot rod thing started kind of after World War II, and there was a lot of old airplanes in the scrapyards out in California that uh, young fellers would go and salvage parts off of, and a lot of those old airplane parts wound up being parts of the hot rods that they built during that era. It wouldn't, wouldn't have been unusual at all to, if you were going to have any seat belts, which a lot of people didn't, but for racing purposes, a lot of people did. And if you were going to have any, you couldn't call Speedway Motors because it didn't exist back then. You'd have to, uh, the wrong way. you'd have to go out to the airplane junkyard and find you an old airplane, find you an old B-52 or, or a, Corsair or some kind of airplane. Steel seat belts out of it for the hot rods. <clears throat> I've had a good day, by the way. I've enjoyed this day a lot. I'm really happy with my my new bucket seats and. Uh, I really like it changes the feel of the car when you're not sitting on a seat that's too tall and when you're sitting on a seat that you can adjust it makes a big difference on how things feel i like that i like that a lot all over everything a little bit here see this is going in here real good so what i can do now and i can make him get a bumper on this Drill some holes in it, drill some holes in that, slip that on there and put some nuts on it. We'll be good to go. Good to go, my friends. That'd be a beautiful thing. I like good to go. I wish I'd have got some video of driving the car a while ago. I did, but it was all from inside and it's hard to see much when you're inside the car. We talked about this before. I often wanted to get a camera that would sort of follow me along and film me when I'm driving a car. As of yet, I hadn't really found one that suits my purposes for that. There, now that that's cleaned out. And this should go into that. Like this. Oh, that's lovely. So, uh, the next thing to do is to get a measurement. Cut this bumper figure out how much how long I want this to be uh, I'm probably going to want this to stick out a little past the body on each side but not so much so that it becomes a hook I don't want to go around the corner and have it hook into somebody else's fender or something so probably I'll only come out beyond this about an inch on each side so I'll grab a tape measure we'll run out of the house try to get a nice pretty cut on it what I may do is uh, thinking about cutting it in a way that I could fold the ends over and use the metal from the ends to close the ends of it rather than just weld a piece onto the end. Uh, so if I was going to do that, I'd want to leave about two, three inches on each end so I have enough to do that with. Now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a, go grab a uh, tape measure, and we'll uh, we'll get us a measurement here. 